Bond duration and bond convexity are both concepts that tell us how does a bond's price change as market interest rates change. But how are they different? Well, we'll go over both of these concepts in detail and show how to calculate them in Excel. Bond duration is one of the most important concepts to learn in fixed income investing. It measures the sensitivity of a bond's price to changes in market interest rates. So if a bond's duration is equal to three, for every 1% increase in interest rates, the bond price will decrease approximately by 3%. It's an inverse relationship between interest rates and the price of the bond. There are two really important factors to keep in mind when we're discussing duration. The first is the time to maturity. So the longer the time to maturity, the higher the duration. Think about it like this. If a friend owed you $100 and he had to pay you back in five days, you wouldn't really care about what was happening with interest rates because you were going to get that money back immediately and then you can just lend it out to someone else. But if that friend owed you $100 and was going to pay you back in 20 years, you'd be very concerned what was happening with interest rates in the market because that's 20 years that you can't reinvest that money. Um, so it's very sensitive to the uh, time to maturity. The second factor is the coupon rate. So the larger the coupon rate, the lower the duration. Think about it like this. If the bond has a high coupon rate, that means every year you're getting a high amount of money paid to you on that bond. So you're getting your investment returned sooner if the, dur if the coupon rate is higher. And the sooner you get your money returned to you, um, the less concerned you are, the less sensitive your asset is to duration. Now think about a zero coupon bond. If you receive no coupons, all of the payment of that bond will happen at the very end, at, at maturity, which means that the duration is equal to the time to maturity. So the highest duration you can have is when all of the cash flows are at the end of the investment, like a zero coupon bond. McCulley duration for a bond is calculated as the weighted average of the present values of the cash flows. Now, in order to calculate this, we're just going to use a fictional bond. This one in the example will have a yield or a time to maturity of eight years, a yield to maturity of 6%. So we'll say that's the market interest rate, 6%, and a coupon rate of 5%. So we can see we have periods one through eight. And in each of the first seven periods, you'll be receiving $50 if you hold this bond, which is just the $1,000 notional value of the bond, times 5%. The last period, you'll receive the $1,000 notional value, value plus the 5% interest, so you'll get $1,050. Now, for each period, we need to find the present value back to today. So right in period 8, um, we're going to be receiving this amount of money, but we have to discount it eight years at the current market rate to get its present value today. So this will just be um, equal to the uh, cash flow divided by one plus the yield to maturity to the power of the period. So it's one year out, and then for the rest of these, their denominators will increase. So that's the present value for each one. You can see what it looks like for the last one. Now we need to find the weighted present value of each one. So we found the total present value here. Now let's find which, what weight each one contributes to that value. So it'll just be its present value for the period divided by the total. And we'll drag all that down. And you'll see if I sum all of these, it will be equal to 100%. There you go. Now, in order to find the Macaulay duration, we just simply take the period so how many years out is this cash flow multiplied what by what weight does it contribute to the actual present value? And then if we pull all of these down, we'll see that the Macaulay duration is actually 6.74, which means that when market interest rates go up 1%, the price of the bond or value of the bond should fall by 7 or 6.74%. An important thing to note about bond duration is that it assumes a linear relationship between the yield to maturity and the bond price change. So we want to plot how does the bond's price change as yields change. So we started off with a yield to maturity of 6%, so we'll just put that right here. But let's see what happens when we 
decrease market yields down to 2% or up to 9%. So we know at 6% that the price is 937.9. We already calculated that. But now we need to find how does it change with the change in interest rates. So we'll do 1 plus and then we'll take the change in the yield multiplied by the Macaulay duration and then we'll multiply that value by the actual original price of the bond. We gotta lock in some of these cells here. So that gives us the price of the bond at 5%. So you'll notice it actually increased in value because the interest rates decreased. So now let's see what happens when we go up to 2% or down to 9%. So you can see it's this linear relationship. As interest rates are increasing, the bond price is decreasing linearly. As interest rates are increasing, the bond's price is increasing linearly. Up until this point in the video, we have been assuming that the relationship between the change in a bond's price and the change in the market interest rates is a linear relationship. That means if the interest rates go up or down, the bond's price goes up or down by a certain percentage and it moves in a straight line. That is not the case. It's, there's actually a curved relationship between bond's price and the the market interest rates, and that's where convexity comes into play to give us an accurate estimate of the change in a bond's price when the rates change. So here we have the exact same graph as we just made in Excel. So we have interest rates on the horizontal axis and bond price on the vertical axis. If all we do is account for bond duration, we'll see that when interest rates decrease, or, or when interest rates increase, bond price decreases linearly. Assume that's a straight line. I kind of am terrible at drawing straight lines, so cut me some slack. But if we include convexity and duration, we find this curved effect, and this is actually closer to the true approximation of the change in bonds price with changes in interest rates. And so one thing we'll notice here is that as interest rates decrease, with the orange line, the bond price in increases by more than just ac accounting for duration. But when interest rates increase, the bond price decreases by less than just assuming duration. So it's better to have higher convexity. In order to find the value of approximate convexity, we need to look at the change in the value of the bond as the yield to maturity or the interest rates change. So here I'll explain the numerator. So this V negative, this is just the value of the bond when interest rates fall, plus this V positive, which is the value of the bond when interest rates rise, subtracted by two times the original value of the bond. Now the denominator is the yield to maturity, the change in the yield to maturity, so how much should interest rates change, squared, multiplied by the original value of the bond. Now this is where we put it all together, the formula for the approximate change in bond price. So we find that it equals the negative duration multiplied by the change in yield to maturity. If we just stop there, we would have this blue line which would represent a linear relationship. But to get a more accurate estimate, we have to add one half times convexity times the change to yield to maturity squared, which gives us this more accurate orange curved line for the change in the price of a bond as yield to maturity changes. Now, just like all of my videos, you can download the Excel file for free by clicking the link in the description. Thank you.